Imagine. for being part of why in the morning and uh, as always it is a pleasure if you're just, if at all you're just joining us my name is ram maguko you're just in time for the next conversation of the day it's all about youth and politics at ram maguko is where you can find me on my social media handles at y254 channel the hashtag is why in the morning uh, remember we are live on our website at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash y254 that is www.kbc.co.ke forward slash y254 engage with us we have a lot in our con in stock for you in our conversation today and today we want to talk about youth in leadership youth in leadership and uh, how what is the role of youth especially when it comes to leading in the country i'm joined by a very interesting individual today he is the youth chairperson and governor at the daystar university that is a night uh, he's called walter nalwa karibu walter thank you so much uh, he, I'm, I'm, I'm well aware that he's, he, he also plays a role at uh, the uh, Tongarani constituency. Yes, I do. Uh, what do you do there? Uh, development agendas with the ones who frontier and, uh, and push the members of parliament so that okay. they can uh, give the bursaries to the people they ought to. Wow. Yeah, because uh, if we don't, sometimes they relax and uh, give the bursaries or any other development agenda that they ought to do. Mm -hmm they make it selfish. Wow. So we try as much as we can to put mm -hmm. them on toes. The power of the youth, yeah. the power of a young man. Yeah. Uh, and uh, today, as we shall be talking about it, remember, uh, we shall also uh, talk about uh, uh, national politics, but also cover youth leadership in the country. A very good morning to you. Be part of this conversation, especially on our online platforms. Uh, Walter. Yes, yes. Let me start first of all by acknowledging that uh, you lead at uh, Daystar, main yes. campus. Yeah, main campus. We have different leaders from different campuses. Yeah. yeah. Um, how has it been in leadership, as, uh, especially as the, the uh, do you say, is it governor or chairman? Uh, it depends with the way you want to say it, but it's the same thing. The definition is the same, uh -huh. and the roles are the same. Uh -huh. uh, in my time in leadership, it has been good uh -huh. because. I've tried so much to to leave my my words and uh, to do whatever I promised yeah, yeah. my constituents. Mm -hmm. So the leadership with dignity and uh, minimizing the politic aspect of it mm -hmm. is what we, we frontier. And uh, our core mandate as Daystar is uh, we ride on servant leadership. Mm -hmm. So even in as much as we can say it's politics, taking part of but part of it, 80% um, or 70% is leadership. Mm. And uh, the moment you don't work in Daystar, mm. students themselves, they do watch and uh, they'll question you. Mm. They are not always reluctant on anything. They always keep your toes? Yeah. Uh, what about Daystar? Yeah. I'm sure kuna wengi ambao kwa Y254, your chairperson is here. Ask him questions. Kama kuna kitu Daystar, main campus, ambayo kufraishi, Today you have the ability and the power to ask him questions and you will get answered. Yeah, very Correct. True. Yeah, true. One day we will come to Daystar and have a show there. We are welcome. <laughs> as soon as you can. Yeah. You are welcome. Um, when, when you look at uh, youth in leadership, especially in the country, do you feel like youths are playing their role in taking up positions and after they have taken up positions, are they executing and playing their role in that particular position? Uh, to my knowledge as at now, uh, not 100%, mm -hmm. but uh, below average. Mm -hmm. is taking the initiative to take leadership and politics uh, because uh, majority tend to be ignorant and the elites, mm -hmm. politicians, take advantage of our vulnerability. Mm -hmm. So they know we are, we are disadvantaged, we don't have money, 
we are not employed so for us we are looking for that daily bread uh, a daily meal so them giving us a meal a day or handouts mm. that is what a youth needs they are looking for a means for survival so to them it's a plus but to us it ends up being a disadvantage because you don't need handouts or you do need handouts we need handouts to survive you need handouts to survive, to survive. okay yeah but then uh, we really want to see the leadership that everyone is talking about mm. but uh, with the unemployment that is there right now mm. and uh, the depression and everything you see like right now there's a lot of graduation taking place in different campuses yeah i saw and, i saw many people graduating yeah. yesterday and uh friday no this is Sunday. Yes, no, Saturday. No, no, and University of Nairobi. Fr and Uni University of Nairobi was Saturday? Yeah. Or, or is it Thursday? Thursday, Friday. Thursday, Friday. Yeah. We, I, I also saw USIU. I don't know if USIU graduated, but I saw many institutions having their graduation ceremonies last week. Yeah, true. And you're graduating into a society where you, don't, you, you have no clue you're what sure. your next step will be. I'm not sure at all. Yeah. So approximately, they, they, according to statistics, they say approximately each year it's 50,000 graduates. And uh, among these 50,000 graduates, we are not sure who is going to be employed, who is not going to be employed. Mm. And the criteria in which they'll ask you, uh, how, how, how will you get the experience? Or do you have the four-year experience or the two-year experience, yet you've just graduated, you're entering the job market? So it becomes difficult for the youth. That is why we end up being frustrated. We get into drugs. Mm. We ignore everything and consider our politics, leadership as none of our business. Um, I, I, I would like you to uh, um, give me your, your thoughts as an individual. What pushed you to get into politics? What drove you to, what, what drove you to choose to become a student leader and get interested in having conversations like today, we are going to be talking about national politics. What is that drove you towards that particular line of work? Okay, uh, personally I'd say uh, leadership is a call from God mm -hmm. and uh, I've been serving since my time in high school and when I entered campus. So I think this is a call to me and mm. I believe uh, I'm delivering my best. And uh, coming into campus it was a little bit different mm. because in campus there are a lot of riots, a lot of demonstrations, a lot of advocacy. But then uh, advocacy alone, when you are not on the table, yeah. does not bring a solution. I've, I've, I've not seen lots of riots in, at, at Daystar. It was once and it was very serious. You, ha you had it once? Yeah, it was there in 2018. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even if you demonstrate and you are not on the table, negotiation table, mm. to advocate for, for your issues at the table, it's very difficult for them to be listened to. Mm -hmm. So you have to find your means to be on the table mm -hmm. and discuss issues youth. And, and, and you see, it is that particular question that I want you to now spread the net into. Do you feel like the same, same push or drive that you have um, ought to have been reflected in many other individuals who are getting into politics as youth and student leaders? Yeah, the same drive, yes, but uh, uh, people have different interests when getting into the politics. Mm. Uh, before I get into office, I'll tend to be very nice, very good to you. But uh, immediately I'm there. I now feel I'm comfortable. I can do whatever I want because this power has entered into my mind. My mind. So I ignore everything and end up as fulfilling my, my selfish interest. Mm. And that is the, the negative aspect of most of us leaders. I think uh, if we try to hone our words and be diligent to ourselves and uh, the people who voted us in, mm. we can live a better society mm. moving into the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I want us to get into national politics, but before that, mm -hmm. I, want you, I want you to uh, give us your thoughts in regards to uh, the student leaders who transition from the institutions of learning into mm -hmm. Politics. politics um how how is um it supposed to be perceived especially from a public eye because we've seen many student leaders like for example Bab babo we know he was a student leader at uh, sonu 
he moved into politics now member of parliament and uh, so many other student leaders have getting gotten into politics in different positions in government both in the former regime and the current one is there a way that uh, we can be able to promote these student leaders because after they get into politics the perceptions change right now you're talking about servant leadership but once you get into that other once you cross the border let me for lack for lack of a better term once you cross the border the perceptions change the perspectives change the the the, the, the things you stand for begin to change why so how can we change that narrative uh, as at now according to my knowledge I understand that uh, the youth leaders who have been voted into parliament, mm. a good number is trying their best. Mm. For instance, uh, Babu Owino, in fact, he might be having his negative, negative uh, maybe perceptions. People might have the negative perception ag according yeah. to him. Yeah. But uh, if you go to his constituency, the guy is working. The guy, uh, majority of the students from Embakasi East constituency are in school. And mm. bursaries are usually brought to school any time, every time, and then the empower, empowerment projects are being done. He's done table banking among among women, the constructions of roads. So, him is working. Uh, another example is a uh, uh, David Osiani in the is in a ministry, yes, CAS, mm. but uh, he's working. He's trying his level best to ensure. There is uh, empowerment among youths and is always willing and free to come and share with the youth and uh, give them a, a knowledge on how things are supposed to be working. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, my former student leader uh, from my campus yeah. uh, is called uh, John Brian Oyaro. Mm. Right now he's doing uh, uh, projects in his home county, not because he has been elected, but because he has decided let me work for my community because my community is my responsibility. Mm -hmm. Others from University of Nairobi, like uh, Vikings Bondo, they are doing work, yet they have not been elected yet. Okay. So, so that's part of that drive is still there. That drive is there, and I believe that if we student leaders mm. can stand and say this is the path we want to follow, we can lead the 15, 15 million youths to rally behind a youth leader that we believe can change the society. Because youth then, in, in leadership is very important. Very important. And then as at now, I believe majority of the Kenyans, majority of the youths are educated. Mm. Even if you've not entered the university education, at least you have that form for uh, knowledge that you can be able to think critically, evaluate and study and be able to identify who is the leader and who is not the leader too. Mm to be trusted. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I believe in youth leadership and I believe that uh, we as youth leaders, a time is coming. Mm -hmm. Now they are talking about economy. Mm -hmm. A time is coming whereby we, the leaders of today, will not mind our tribal angles, we will not mind of uh, where the person comes from, mm -hmm. but uh, we will all be minding about service. Okay. And I believe by 2027, mm -hmm. I majority of us will be there and we will have that constructive conversation are you are you planning to get into active politics like you the way um some of our leaders have uh, gotten into um uh, vying for a seat in future uh in future yes but as at now mm -hmm. i'm still working at uh, the university level mm -hmm. and when i'm out of that uh, area of juries right now mm -hmm. i'll plan for what next now yeah. i want us to talk about that particular uh, aspect uh, national politics um because the youth have a voice as a student leader you, you you lead your people at this university and many others at even at stronger in yes. constituency yeah. what do you think about uh, what's taking place uh, in the at the national level right now we're seeing the president displaying a form of a sense of disappointment in some of the members of parliament who uh, according to him say that he 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 brought in the bbi to promote uh, the mount kenya region but the mps of that region disappointed him by you know not supporting this initiative and going uh, behind his back at the end of the day 
to uh, rally in support for the other, the, the, the other side. Your thoughts on that? Uh, for me, I'd say that uh, these MPs are always on either sides. I'd say I'll use the analogy of two sides of the same coin. Mm. Uh, they are not different. Uh, they have not been working for their constituents. So right now they just depend on going and siphon money from their kingpin, mm. get money, come back, uh, dish it out to, to the electorate so as to gain uh, that trust or uh, for, for the electorate to be subjective to them. So that come 2022, mm -hmm. uh, if I do not have a track record, my key performing indicators are not are not uh, clear yet is it is it consistency very important yeah. in leadership yeah so if these things are not clear the only option i have is to buy the vote or uh, bribe the voters so that they can uh, they can vote me back again because uh, right now i don't think even uh, they might be launching me a project but those projects are just a stepping stone to tell the electorates that you see mimi nimeanza kazi so mm. after they are given that term again, they wait for another four years and then do the same thing. Mm. So it becomes difficult for performance to be done by the members of the legislature. I, is the president justified in his uh, of feeling or feeling betrayed? Uh, for the president, I can say he's betrayed right now because uh, even his jubilee party right now the people who are supposed to be his pivot or uh, behind him to ensure that his big four agenda and other things that he promised are being done. It seems like uh, majority have run away. They have left him. He's alone. So he, he's kind of frustrated. And uh, sometimes I do say he usually talk out of frustration and uh, disappointment yeah, to mm. an extent that... Uh, he doesn't even want to act as a president or say things as they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, sugarcoat to some extent and try to just find that personal motivation to mm -hmm. to address the public. And, and and now that we are where we are, yeah. are we seeing Central Kenya going at a loss because they were supposed to be given over 50 billion shillings, over yeah. 50 billion shillings, um, uh, if, if it's not 53 billion shillings, if I'm not wrong, uh, uh, that was supposed to go to Central Kenya. Um, should it be considered as a loss when the BBI flopped, especially for Central Region and, and any other region that was supposed to benefit? Yeah, when the BBI flopped, it was, uh, it was a loss to the Central, majorly because they are among the majority in terms of numbers. Mm. So they'll definitely lose. And uh, besides them, too, right now you can see there is no presidential candidate again from the central Kenya yeah. who is, uh, can be rated same as uh, right on Raila Molo Odinga or the deputy president, William Ruto. Mm. So they are on, uh, on the edge trying to understand how will they fit in and get into the government so that they can even rally for the interest of the people from Mount Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, even the governors, you see right now, all of them are striving yeah. to ensure they are elite or they are in a, a coalition that will form the government. Mm -hmm. So for Mount Kenya, it was a loss, yes, but I think uh, uh, in as much as equality is concerned, it's okay, let's move it the way it is right now. Now, he was saying yeah. that now he, he has left the, 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 uh, the region now in the hands of the people. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I understand that he's going to fight and uh, try to get things for central Kenya. But now that he feels betrayed, he has left it in the hands of the people to choose the kind of uh, you know, uh, leaders that they want to have. Uh, to me, to me, that that is a, a desperate statement that uh, I think maybe should have, should have not said because since he's the president and he comes from Mount Kenya region, mm. he's the spokesperson automatically. But uh, when it gets to a situation whereby you see Martha Karua is being voted in as the spokesperson, mm -hmm. the speaker of the parliament spokesperson, yeah. again it ends up being again like uh, on how the Luya land is 
is right now mm. uh, five spokespersons so who will be the person to to lead the others or who will be the person to speak on behalf of everyone you know in, so. in, in, in his own he said that he wanted to leave the region in safe hands but now you're saying he's just going to leave it in the hands of the people that is you saying that is still a desperate move and that is still a desperate move because uh, these people are the same people that will be manipulated by him by by the, the by, by the MPs and by whoever the person that uh, maybe might lead because uh, let's say Martha Karua is now the spokesperson. Mm -hmm. uh, the Speaker of the Senate is, is the spokesperson. Yeah. I, the other day, um, Muranga County Governor said, no, yeah, Muranga County Governor said he wants to be the president and is the spokesperson in the Mount Kenya region. So mm -hmm. each region is trying to, or each region in Mount Kenya is trying to pull aside, mm -hmm. and that will be causing a lot of division. And like when there is one person. And, and that's why these unity talks were very important. Yeah. Yet, they, do you feel in your own way, in your own view, that uh, these unity talks are going to uh, bear fruit? Unity talks as at now because... Uh, yes, we have, have Mata Karua, we have Kuria, Moses Kuria there. You know? Yeah. For now, for now, they might sit down and agree just because there is an election coming up next year. Mm. But uh, we don't know what these people are planning behind doors because of maybe their personal interests and what. Because each and every person, even they might be thinking of the entire Mount Kenya region to be united. Mm. But uh, when it comes to the to them individually, oh, mm. what are they thinking? Because uh, at the end of the day, it will be. What are you bringing on the table? Do you have numbers? Do you have resources that mm -hmm. will help us bargain on the table? Mm -hmm. uh, if if there is no one who is going to be vie for presidency from our region, what are we going to do? So yeah, the unity yeah, talks yeah. might be successful, but uh, it's a very difficult conversation that they need to they need to have all of them. Uh, do you think that like, he has lost trust in the region? Because that is his backyard. For president, according to his uh, state sentiments, uh, previously I'd say he's kind of disappointment. But uh, we cannot say because this might be, to some extent, it can be a political language, mm. or he might be meaning it. So we don't know again if it's a, a reverse psychology playing to the people. Okay. He might again wake up and say, "No, you can't do this. Mm. I'm the one in charge." Yeah. Because he's the president. He's the president. Now, um, in your own view, we've seen many members of parliament coming up with bills in parliament. And it was interesting. And I was remembering what Honorable Mayana Kamanda said. He said that these people who were campaigning against BBI are now shouting, you know, loudly uh, over the same things that they campaigned against currently and uh, it reminded me of the uh, of what honorable kioni did in parliament you know there's uh these there are these conversations on the the, the the prime minister's seat getting two deputy presidents and two deputy prime ministers this is an aspect that was in the bbi interestingly are we seeing double standards? Are we seeing people trying to campaign against something yet try to bring it back again in other means? What exactly are we talking about here? Inconsistency in leadership, then how can they be trusted if they speak from one, from both sides of the, of the cheeks? Uh, to me, according to how they maneuver and every day, I, I say that, uh, these people usually are usually driven by their personal interests. Because even before, during the voting of the BBI at the Senate mm. or at the Parliament, you could see a person who is opposing it in public, when they get into Parliament, they are voting for it. Yeah. And a person who is in, who is, uh, in public, maybe, uh, voting for it, <laughs> when it comes they, to the they Parliament, voted no. they voted no. So... To them, I know it's their self-interest, but not the goodwill of the people. 
if it could be a matter of goodwill of the people, yeah. this entire document could have been crafted and uh, drafted in a manner that uh, all the good things in that particular doc document included and uh, whatever that they think is not constructive mm. can be think through and uh, analyzed critically and uh, a sober judgment made because the document had some good uh, aspect of it so and it also had negative aspect of it but again the procedure in which uh, it was taken through mm. it was wrong so, so we, we, where where is your stand in regards to that particular document uh, to the particular document, to me, I was giving it uh, eighty percent a no and twenty percent a yes, because uh, uh, the eighty percent was not realistic to me. Yeah. For example, the tax-free uh, and uh, uh, tax-free holiday yeah. among the graduates or the youths, yeah. because uh, if the mere constitution that we have right now it has not been acted upon uh, that thoroughly how are we, how sure are we that they are going to work on it the and anyone yeah so okay. to me it was 80 percent a no and 20 percent a yes for the bbi document. and the, which, which which particular aspects do we have that uh, are incorporated in the 20 percent in the 20 percent yes uh the 20 percent was the benefit of doubt on whether it passes, <laughs> if this, if, if, if this uh, document is... Uh, You're playing safe. The 20% was the, the benefit of doubt uh. to it. And then uh, the fact again that uh, the, the entire document, yes, the tax levy could be very good for us. What about youths. the money that is going to the constituencies? That again, yes, the money will go to the constituency. Right now, there is money allocated to the constituency. It is not well utilized. So mm. how sure are we that even if it's increased, it will be utilized or be given to the development agenda? I want us to make this conversation to a close. Mm. And uh, I, I want us to wrap it up. Because at the end of the day, it's all about youth in leadership. leadership yeah. uh, speak to that particular Kenyan watching you today. Have a final word. And uh, I also don't want you to fail to address your people who are Dista. At least to one be a kid. Yeah. Okay, to any youth outside there who is aspiring to be a leader or uh, who has that urge and motivation to lead uh, their people, I'd urge us to not to be passengers at our capacities but to be the drivers. Because matters youth can only be addressed by the youth and uh, therefore the youth. So let us stand up and uh, advocate for our interest, advocate for our issues until we are heard. Uh, to my fellow Dexter University students, this is Nalua Walter here, and uh, I believe you believe in my leadership, and we are going to work together mm. moving forward. Hey. Thank you. Well, you want to your campaign? Do you have elections coming up? Mm. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, yeah. No, Akuna. Akuna says. Akuna says. Until next year. Until next year. Yeah. But I, I, I hope you have left a mark at the. Uh, uh, I have. The, the you, can, you can ask. I know there are a couple of interns here. Mm. You can ask them. Come at the Easter and Vizuri Sana. Yeah. You mean campus is on that is at uh, Athi River? Yeah. Nalwa? Nalwa Walter is my thank, name. Thank you for coming. And yeah, thank you so much. How can we find you on social media? Uh, my social media handle is uh, senior dot mm -hmm. Yeah, everywhere, all the platforms: Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you so much, my brother. Keep, Thank you so much. Keep it up. Thank you so I much. I love what you're doing. Uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing. At the end of the day, we are transforming Kenya into a better, uh, a better country. Yeah, true. For the generations that will come after mm -hmm. us yeah. and that after them. It is our responsibility. Thank you, my brother. But again, I welcome you to Dista anytime you feel like. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I will come. I will come. To the fun. That brings us to the end of this conversation on Why in the Morning. My name is Ram Maguko. Uh, keep it going on our social media handles. The hashtag is Why in the Morning at Ram Maguko and at Y254 channel. We have a lot in store for you still coming up in a bit. This is Why in the Morning.